are here with Berendina Buist for Flora Vulgaris at M Galleries PNA. Hi, Berendina. Hey, Frank. So, wonderful exhibition in, in the Arboretum space. So, thank you for doing this. So, you want to just give us an introduction about yourself? Um, my name is Berendina. I was born in Holland, the land of the tulips. Mm. And um, I'm here now already for 22 years. So, uh, I've become American. I'm happy to be American. Mm. You have good flowers too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so do you want to unpack the title of the show here, Flora Volcaris? So yeah, about. Flora, I think Flora is obvious. Like it's, uh, flora refers to the plant world and then in particular to flowers. And Volgaris, we initially will think immediately, like, okay, is she talking about vulgar? Mm -hmm. And I like that kind of tricky, <laughs> <laughs> tricky thing. <laughs> Somebody's throwing me kisses. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so the tricky thing of uh, um, uh, yeah, vulgaris um, in Latin means like regular, like regular mm -hmm. flowers. These are not really super special flowers, right? You find these flowers at the markets and somewhere in your yard, maybe mm -hmm. if you're lucky. Uh, vulgaris has this. Uh, also, you would think like vulgar, like because of the wild colors the natural world gives mm -hmm. us. Like, this is wild, like yeah, yeah. screaming colors. Screaming, yeah. And so I like the kind of the, the subversive title of that, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Well, do you want to share a bit about the process of the creation of these photographs? And how, did, how does it get to this state? Yeah, so uh, the, the subtitle of the show is Quiet Transformations, which actually gives it away already a little bit. Mm. Um, last summer, I started to photograph a big bunch of flowers that were slowly turning brown and mushy and that happened all in a space of two weeks mm. and I was fascinated by it but at the same time I was struggling because am I going to be an artist who does flowers? <laughs> and so, uh, so I, I wrestled with it and I, I cropped it, I zoomed in, I zoomed out, I did this and the other and then I realized now it's all about transformation mm. and what the flowers offer up in two weeks time is, is a full circle like from the fullest and prettiest of blooms to total, total mush. Mm. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> More kisses. <laughs> yeah, kisses. So, um, so, uh, so I discovered that it was all about transformation mm. and then mm -hmm. I went to see Jasper John's uh, shows in uh, New York and in Philadelphia. Mm. And one of his, it's good when somebody formalizes your thoughts, right? So one of the things that he's famous for that he said, and I believe he did because you can see it in his work, um, take an object, do something to it, and then do something else to it. And he also has said, um, I was wondering if I could do it differently. Mm, mm. And I was thinking, oh, so that's how you grow a series first. Like, it's very practical. Mm. And uh, it's what interests me in the flowers, too. So, um, the transformation, right? So, in this case, uh, the next step after photographing the straight flowers, straight photographing the flowers, I just chose two or three images and uh, transformed them on the computer. Yeah. And well, here's, this is a great example right behind you. Let's take a look at this series of starting over here. So, which is interesting. Can you talk about this piece and how it, you know, kind of begins and ends, you know, this, uh, this grouping? Yes. So you would think, and you were not the only one to observe this, Frank. There were more people saying, okay, well, then it started out like this, and then it went like this, 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 this. Actually, it started out like this, and even more complicated. Yeah. Let's go over here. See the hole. Yeah. Closest, this is the closest image to the original image. And then I started to kind of transform it and, and do all kinds of things to it. And then I developed a <laughs> desire to totally destroy it, because that's also what I saw uh, happening on my table last mm. summer, right? Totally turning into mush. And, right. Um, I like how, like, you feel photographically, 
showed like this disintegration, you know, in a way, you know, that you're mirroring the process of, of what you're observing through the photograph itself. Yeah. Yeah, I find really, is so that you're not taking pictures of things disintegrating necessarily, but you're making the image disintegrate. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. And in this case, uh, I was very uh, dependent on the software, right? This mm. all happens on the computer. And then you have the Photoshop talking to the Illustrator, mm -hmm. and there's an element of chance. What happens in between the two programs? You change one thing in this one, and then uh, it asks you in the next one, like, do you want to update your files? And then I can decide whether I like it or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we have a guest here for that. Yeah. Can you show us uh, like a translation moment between the, the two pieces or a few pieces between the uh, different pieces of software? Uh, for instance, um, when you start out like this and you um, can choose uh, certain filters in your uh, software mm -hmm. and it will break it up like this, like it explodes <laughs> into color. Um, then you can go back to the original image mm -hmm. and adjust the color mm -hmm. and then the other program asks you, do you want me to update it? <laughs> and ah. see? And then you can see... Go when, back to that again. Yeah, you can see... So it, after you do that for a while, you know that there's some space for you to manipulate whatever is your, um, you know, the result mm -hmm. here. Well, you're earlier were talking about how your each image you were thinking about a way of making. Can you share that again with me? It was a, like this. This you feel like a, a impressionist, and this you feel like a pop art. So, like, can you go through these pieces like again? Because I love I love that part. <laughs> so, so let's say this is mostly here. I try to do a silk screen right, effect. Right. Here I try to add some lights, mm. like as if it's lighted from the back. Mm. Here I try even to uh, push that effect even more so that it sort of it glows off the surface. Mm. Here I try to go into the pointillism mm -hmm. of the Impressionists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, here I start to do a bit of Cubism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, here I even break it up more. The, the cubes become bigger and uh, the colors change somewhat. Mm. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of going back and forth, back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth, and uh, I don't know what happened in between, you know, uh, like yeah, the right. algorithms, what, what happened there, there's a lot of, you need to kind of allow for, for chance, mm -hmm. um, and you have, you need to allow for non-perfection. Mm. You need to be tolerant of that, and that's just really hard. But when I see people working around me in series, that's what they do. They just, you know, they work on a series, they present it, and they tolerate whatever became of their idea, mm. which is good because they belong together. These pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I ha I had not so much work before like that. But uh, I think it's a whole new um, way of working. I, I like it. I like it. Mm. It's, it's also a way to share my process with people, which they, people love to learn about the work. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And this is kind of an entrance into it, don't you think? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Well, um, do you want to talk about like some influences of yours? You know, so, uh, what have, so speaking of that, what have you been thinking about or looking at you know, to create these, uh, these sensibilities? Well, you know, we just mentioned Jasper Johns, yes. of course, and, and being in the group with you, Frank, mm -hmm. and, and the people from the collective, I see uh, younger people than me um, uh, working like that, and it makes me think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I always thought that, uh, you know, I've been exposed a lot to uh, Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I was in love with the Impressionist when I was way younger. There's so many influences, but if you think about when you when you grow as an artist, you need to choose your way of working. What is your process? Mm -hmm. um, because it needs to stay workable. You cannot just wait 
in your studio and for the muse to visit you. You can't. Mm -hmm. You just have to show up and get to work. So what is your process, mm -hmm. um, which is a tool. And, um, and at the same time, it allows a lot of freedom, I think. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, because it doesn't seem related to my flower pictures, but actually it is. It is. So two things collided here in this hat. Um, uh, we cleaned out the apartment of my father-in-law last year, and he was somewhat of a hoarder, so I found 30 bucket heads, and they didn't stop. They kept coming, and with a, along with other crap. So, <laughs> excuse my... <laughs> but I, uh, I started to stick things that I found in the apartment to those bucket heads. Oh, terrific. So, uh, and we started to call them something. We started to call them voodoo heads. Oh, <laughs> and so, so I came back and holy moly, I myself had tons of little hats too. Oh, wonderful. So oh, I stuck... I stuck a lot of uh, what I had uh, in the house, I stuck to my, my own found hats and then I was thinking, okay, and then I was in, totally in the flower world and I was thinking, I'm going to stick flowers and leaves to this hat. Good. And so I made like four variations, but this is the most fun because it has to <laughs> it really is. It's, it's totally great. It's totally great. It's totally great. I love it. <laughs> so that's the story of the hats. Your earrings <laughs> go with that so beautifully. Oh, um, look at that. Uh, look at it. I'm, oh, you have it. I'm something of a fashionista, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just so much. laughs> so we're talking about the. The most extracted was that the word? Yeah. So, so you you explained how you had installed this group, and for you visually, you started here, right? Yes. And so you this, this were talking to each other to you, but mm. then in real, real, you know, what really happened when I worked on these images? These were the this was the most the, the end product. Interesting. So because I was taking things out the whole time, taking it out, taking it out, see what was left. Mm -hmm. And this was the result. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. do you want to share a little about your uh, different the different media you work in and how this relates to the process of creating photographs? Frank. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, different media. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I can say it all. I, it always starts with a photograph because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I think. I started to photograph when I was very young, so that's my visual language. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is a straight photograph, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, slightly distorted because it's such a close-up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, you see, even here, this is a photograph taken by my cell phone. So uh, when I started to photograph, I had no tolerance for unsharpness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's totally not an issue nowadays. You, you just, uh, and with being a if it's a close-up, why can't it be unsharp? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, what's your problem, really? Yeah, right, right. There's so many banana stories out there. <laughs> like, you know what a banana story is? No, well, let's hear, let's hear. I have an idea of a banana story, but <laughs> so, what is your... Uh... <laughs> so, so my friend Chris was... Uh, when she was little, her mother took her to the grocery store and they would buy bananas. And her mother had said to Chris, <laughs> her mother had said, Chris, never buy bananas that are more than 49 cents per pound. <laughs> so, so uh, That's Chris, good advice. <laughs> Chris was, uh, was asked, was wondering how come when she had children my mother always has bananas and I can't buy bananas because they're so expensive mm. but that was 20 years later <laughs> so she still lived by that banana story right yes right yeah. so just yeah it keeps yeah, the the so, things so, change yeah, so, <laughs> but you need to be aware of the rules you live by otherwise mm -hmm. you know you're gonna be ruled by it oh yeah yeah for sure uh, so, so yeah not focused <laughs> And so do you want to just move over to, let's look at the, the last grouping over here. Okay. So this is the traditionally hung side, you know, so let me show about the, uh, 
uh, the work that's behind you. This one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really try to obliterate the, <laughs> the image. I love it. And, uh, it's wild, it's chaotic. And yeah. still, it, uh, it speaks to Yeah, this. and that's how this, I think about this corner. It's like, the, it's like, it feels like it's pushed to the, almost to the brink of like obliteration, like you say, it's each of these. Yeah, totally. And in such different ways, right? Right, exactly, exactly. All right. Yeah, yeah right. so that's that then. <laughs> Excellent. So, so thank you, Barry, and a wonderful exhibition. And, and come down to M Gallery's P&A to see Flora Vulgaris with Berendina Blis uh, photography. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Berendina.